Hi guys and welcome back to the Auto Finesse Detailing Academy where today we're joined by this rather special Mercedes 190E Cosworth. On this video we're going to do something a little bit different and I'm not going to keep coming in and talking to you. We're going to just hold out on the details, share with you some of the process as we go and I'll do a little voiceover to explain exactly what products we're using and the methods involved on this car. Stick with us, see how it all goes. So as always, we're starting things off with the wheels. A thorough rinse down before we go in and apply a wheel cleaner and let that dwell for as long as possible. We then attack the wheels starting on the barrel, working in a 12 o'clock position, working around in a clockwise manner. We do the barrel, then the faces with a detail brush, and then we finish off any last bits by using a wash mitt. We then turn our attention finally to the tire walls. Using an APC, we thoroughly scrub that in to remove any old tyre dressings or road grime that's got ingrained into the tread. We then set about a final rinse of the tyre and the wheel all together as one before repeating the process on the next three corners. Now we turn our attention to another grubby area of the vehicle, the door shuts. Hitting them with eradicate and then brushing that in to break down any road grime and grease from servicing over the years. We do them all to so start on the driver's side, work our way around the vehicle and then thoroughly rinse when we rinse the vehicle off. With any loose debris rinsed from the vehicle, we then apply a pre-cleaner. So a pre-wash will break down any dirt and road grime before we come into contact with it. But on this particular wash, we're gonna do something slightly different. We're gonna apply our citrus power to the lower areas and round the back, anywhere where the vehicle's really grubby. And then we're gonna put a snow foam over the top of that to really break down anything that's sitting on the vehicle. Now what that does is it amplifies the effect of the snow foam on the lower grubbier areas whilst it's doing its regular thing on the other areas. We'll do this for the whole vehicle and then go around and rinse it all off together in one go. Now with the vehicle thoroughly rinsed, we've removed as much dirt as we possibly can before coming into contact with the vehicle. So it's on with a two bucket wash, using various wash mitts on different parts of the car. On this one, we opted for a noodle mitt. Now noodle mitts, they tend to rinse a little bit freer than your natural lamb's wool mitts. Granted, if this was a maintenance wash and the vehicle was already corrected and in perfect condition, we'd probably opt for a wool mitt over the noodle mix they are that little bit more gentle anyway using one bucket with pure water we rinse the mitt off before taking fresh suds back to the vehicle we always work from the top down so working from the cleanest areas to the dirtiest areas as we go around the vehicle once the car's thoroughly washed we'll give it all one final rinse before fully drying off and then we can look to get the car into the bucket but before that, there's still three more stages remaining on the wash, and that is a three-stage decontamination process. 
We're starting things off using our iron out decontamination remover. Now, what this will do is break down and dissolve any ferrous metal contamination that's on the vehicle. You'll notice here that we're using a small applicator pad just to agitate that product in. Now, what this does is it gives you extra bite from the product. As it's dissolving that contamination, it will wear itself out. So you're kind of spreading it around and putting new products on to the areas that require it. A thorough rinse, and then we can look to the next stage of the decontamination process. Second stage in our decontamination process is tar removal. We're using our obliterate tar and glue remover here, spraying it onto the lower areas and allowing it to dissolve any tar that's stuck to the surface. We then wipe that away with a fresh microfiber cloth and work our way around the whole vehicle. It's mainly the lowers and the backs and the paint that flicks into the wheel arches where you will find tar buildup. We then give the vehicle one final thorough wash with our shampoo solution to neutralize any solvents so that it doesn't melt our clay bar. We then use an organic clay bar to remove the final contamination that stuck to any exterior surfaces. This is most commonly tree sap and other organic matter as opposed to it being tar or any metal particles. The vehicle gets a final rinse and then dried before we can get it in the bay and see what we're actually working with. With the vehicle now clean and dry in the bay, we can set about inspecting the paintwork. First, using a light source, and then we'll take our paint depth gauge just to get a feel and get a reading of what's actually going on clear coat wise. Now what we're looking for here is inconsistencies, any low spots, any high spots, and we're gonna get an idea of what's going on around any deeper marks that we might look to attack later on. Then we tape off any plastic or rubber trim that we don't want to get any polish on. We can now begin the paint correction process. As always, it's trial and error with paint correction. We're starting off with the least aggressive combo to see if we can get to the bottom of those swell marks. You'll notice in this, we started off with DAs and a medium pad and medium polish combo, but it just wasn't cutting it on this old clear coat. It was rock solid, so we ended up stepping up to a more aggressive compound and a softer pad, but on rotary polishers to actually get the desired result. Now, in the finish, you'll see that there's some slight hologramming. At this point in time, that is not a concern to us. We're simply looking to cut to the bottom of those swells and scratches to reveal a nice, even, clear, level surface. And then we'll go on to refine this later on once we've done all of the cutting stages. Working away around the vehicle, we get most of the cutting stage done with the rotary and a full size 150 mil pad. Now, we use rotaries on most areas. There are inherent problems with heat buildup, so you'll notice that the machine is moved around a little bit quicker than you would with a DA. This is just to keep the heat down. You'll also get faster cutting rates from rotaries as well, so you can afford to move them around a little bit faster than you do a DA.
Once we've finished with that, we went ahead and finished down with a medium compound on a medium pad by DA. Reason we finished down by DA is there's a lot less likelihood of getting any holograms in the finish with a DA. And we don't need that extra level of cut that you get from a rotary at this stage. We're just cleaning up any little marks that we've put in there ourselves with the heavy cut of the rotary. With the paint correction and refinement stages complete, we can remove any masking tape from the trim and surrounding rubber areas. And then we can turn our attention to some of the finer details around the car. It's the finer details that really make a job stand out. So what we've done in this case is go ahead and take off some pieces that were looking a little bit worse for wear, like the fuel filler cap. We used our mercury metal polish here with a polishing wheel attachment on a Dremel, some wire wool, and some good old fashioned elbow grease to restore that and bring back the shine. We then turn our attention to the interior of the car, starting off with a thorough vacuum of all surfaces. We've got a crevice tool attachment here with a brush on the end to get into all those nooks and crannies that have maybe been neglected over the years. Then using Total Interior Cleaner, we pre-spray the leather and use a bit of a controversial method now. This is a magic sponge. A lot of people don't like this method, but it is totally safe as long as you view it as paint correction for your leather. It's not something you can do too often, but it is a very effective way of getting rid of any shine that's built up on leather surfaces over time. Another thing that we do that a lot of people kind of forget or neglect are seat belts. Now, this is where a lot of odors in vehicles, especially if people have smoked in cars, this is where it builds up and stays. And that is why you smell it, because you put the seat belts on and they're actually very close to your face and your nose. You can smell the smoke that's in them. So it's very good practice to clean these as well, especially on older vehicles. The roof lining also gets cleaned using Verso mixed up in a bucket and dunking a microfiber cloth in, wringing it out and using that over the roof lining and any plastic surfaces as well on the interior. Back onto the exterior now, and it's the home straight. A final wipe down with Finale to remove any dust or polish residue. We also go over the windows. By no means are these finished at this point. It's just to remove the bulk of the dust or any residue that's got on there. The tyres are dressed using satin and a handy puck applicator. And the wheels are given one last go over with glisten spray wax. It's now time to add the wax. A lot of people will say, why aren't you using a coating on this car? You'll notice more often than not, we're using waxes on the cars that we detail. That's because most of the cars that we detail are older cherished vehicles and not daily drivers. And we firmly believe you cannot beat the look of a natural carnauba wax on any colour finish.
And then absolute finishing touch, the glass, both exterior and interior, using crystal glass cleaner for a smear free finish. And behold the finished results.